So in today's episode, I'm going to talk to VersaCarry. Honestly, I've had a VersaCarry holster from when they first started, and I didn't like it. It kind of dug into my thigh, and it was kind of annoying. Um, I should have returned it to the vendor I bought it from, but it was across the state, and across the state in Montana is four hours, and that's driving 80 miles an hour. So um, I just kept it over the years. Now leading into shot, you know, I was trying to figure out who I'm going to talk to. And, you know, VersaCarry was there and I'm like, well, you know, if VersaCarry is there, they got to have something different. So I started looking at their web page and I'm glad I did because that was a, just a completely different company than I had expected them to be. Now, before I talk to Scott Tierman, I need to pay the bills. And this episode is brought to you by JSD Supply. If you're looking to build your own firearm, check out JSD Supply. They have everything from the frames, the jigs, to the internal parts, barrels, and slides. If you need to build your own gun and just take the pride factor up a notch saying, I did that, check out JSD Supply. With the bills paid, let's talk to Scott Tierman. Scott, tell me about your love of guns. Absolutely, yeah. My name is Scott Tierman. I'm the Director of Operations here at VersaCarry. Just in Brian, Texas. Cool. Now, when I think of VersaCarry, um, I'm going to show you something here. This is what I think of VersaCarry. Yeah, perfect. So, I bought this, I guess, yeah, 11 years ago. Yeah. Um, and what, what's funny is, is that when I thought of VersaCarry, this is what I thought of. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the company with the little weird clip thing that, you know, goes yeah. inside your waistband. But then in, you know, the time leading up to SHOT, and I'm starting to set up, you know, what vendors I want to meet at SHOT, things like that, I start looking at VersaCarry, and I'm like, VersaCarry is not the company that I think they are, at least not the company I knew they were 11 years ago. Um, I mean, you guys have, you know, you, you have, you've moved into leather and Kydex and then, you know, you have your typical leather and Kydex holsters. But what really intrigues me is that you guys started to infuse the two together into yeah. a holster, which just, there's nothing else on the market like it. Um, sure. I mean, that, and I'm just sitting there going, this is so, I'm so glad that I got to relearn about VersaCarry all over again. Yeah, appreciate um, it. So one of the things I wanted to go through before we get into the products is really we can break your products down into the zero bolt, which is holsters like this. Correct. You have your typical uh, in the waistband, out the waistband, your dual carry, which is your hybrid between the two where it can be in the waistband or reconfigured to be out the waistband. Pocket carry, mm -hmm. optics compatible, and Versa Tech. Absolutely. But but that's not all the Versa Carry has. Um, you guys have belts and all kinds. Of, before we get into the into the meat and potatoes here and talk about holsters, would you mind talking about the other products that you have? Yeah, certainly. So um, so one of the one of the big mainstays for us is actually our, our belt line. Um, we sell a ton of carry belts. Across, across many different industries. And, and a big thing for us is that uh, all of us here, we're, we're firearms enthusiasts, we like to carry. We uh, Most of us will conceal carry, some of us like the open carry, but the problem we find is when, when you wear a belt, you typically get a lot of uh, flimsiness and a lot of wear and tear on your belt over over the lifetime of your belt. Uh, and I think that that was, that was one of the biggest things that we decided to address is that there's, you know, you obviously have your, your different types of belts that are out there for us. We wanted something that you could kind of blend it over. So it was it was a belt that is incredibly durable, reliable, thick. It's going to last your lifetime. Uh, but it's also um, it's also something you can wear if you're not carrying. You can look good while you're wearing it. Our belts are, are incredibly thick, um, incredibly durable. Um, all of them are, are made right here in Brian, Texas, 100% United States made. 
And so they're, they're incredibly comfortable, but incredibly durable. And they're going to last you forever. And, and these are not like your typical, I'm going down the Walmart or Target belts. I mean, these are designed for carrying because, you know, you get a belt from just the regular box store or, or whatever. Those belts are, they're pretty flimsy. Um, you know, they're designed to keep your pants up, not secure, you know, a firearm to your side. Sure. And, um, you know, I'm sharing the tab out here of your belts and like, this is, this is what I kind of, cool, I think is cool about your products, especially when we get into your holsters, you have these little cuts into mm -hmm. things to, to try to reveal the material behind it. It's something completely different um, that kind of, it, it's kind of funny because it's almost like, I don't know, it, it's like kind of like dressing up for a date, right? I mean, you kind of have, you wear your good stuff, you know, you, you've got a really cool belt carrying a really you know your pistol in a really cool holster sure and you guys have just thought through the design right i mean yeah. everybody's got a kydex holster sure. uh and just about everybody has a, a leather holster but again you guys thought ahead and going let's do something cool and you carried it in through your other products as well absolutely we're, we're big on the you know you gotta you gotta look good to feel good kind of thing and so um, <laughs> so a lot, a lot of the times the belts you're going to find out on the market today are, uh, are typically single ply belts. We use we use pretty consistent leather across the board. The leather that we're utilizing is uh, is veg tan water buffalo. It's very thick. It's very durable. One of the big the big points uh, that we do with our belts is our belts are actually two ply. So um, you'll see all of our belts will have the stitching because it is two pieces of leather that we've actually adhered together and sewn together, which gives you this. A, a lot of rigidity, a lot of thickness, and a lot of durability. I mean, these belts aren't going to wear out over time. And I mean, they're 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 there. They're going to you know, it's a it's a belt. It'll do the trick. And I mean, it's 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 wild when you put one on for the first time and you kind of uh, it's not something you really think about on a day to day basis. So you know, you get dressed up and you throw your normal belt on for ten years. It's worn out. It looks like trash. Ours, you put it on, and it's one of those things that you know it, it feels a little bit different. It is just it is structured and it's uh it's great it's really comfortable it's really reliable so we, we love it that's one of my favorite products that we make because i mean and that's the whole thing is that a carry boat is way different you know like i was saying before you need that rigidity or otherwise your your gun starts to kind of flop yeah. out um especially if you have a food blister like most of us do yeah. and you're kind of kind of got that muffin top going, yeah. you know, it's going to be pushing that holster out as it is. Yeah. Um, when that belt gives way, now you're, now you're, now your draw is almost out to the side with your, with your, uh, with your holster. Exactly. And I mean, for our belts, I mean, I can't even compress them down to fold them over. They are incredibly thick and incredibly durable. Um, and, and it, it really does make a world of difference. I think when you, you know, when you put one on and you, you really feel that rigidity and that structure. Cause I mean, I, I, I've carried my entire life, and I think that even even inside the waistband concealed carry, you're, you're relying a lot on the, the structure of your, yeah. your jeans to even hold your holster in a, in a good place. But when you have a, a truly thick carry belt that also doesn't look bad, it's not it's not like, a, you know, I, I feel weird wearing like a nylon belt with my trousers, and it looks a little weird. But, I, I mean, these are stylish, but they're comfortable and they're incredibly good. But it makes a big difference when you put them on. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that's the, it, you know, I didn't really ever think about belts mm -hmm. a, a, until I started competing. And now, yeah, I started competing, well, over 20 years ago, <laughs> um, when I turned 21. Um, and, you know, when I started reading through the rules about you need to have a stiff belt, I never understood that, right? I'm like, well, my, my belt's stiff. And then you start looking at a competition belt and you start working through a competition belt. That's when you truly begin to understand belts. Sure. Um, you know, why Why they say in the rules, it's gotta be a stiff belt, at least this this thickness. Because once you put that thing on, that gun is just secured right to your side. And it's great to see a holster company realize that, hey, look, our, you know, our product line doesn't end at the holster. Um, you know, the holster is what carries the gun, but what carries the holster is also just as important. Absolutely. And for me, it, it kind of goes even deeper than that. I think that, um, you know, for me, a lot of us carry firearms 
in, in every situation that we're in, you know, whether we're going to the grocery store, whether we're going, you know, out, out to eat or, or anything like that, we carry a gun to, um, in case something happens to where we have to defend ourselves and we have to protect ourselves. And here at VersaCarry, we kind of took that step back to realize what what materials are needed for you to be the most effective in that situation. So a quality holster, a good, reliable holster that you're, you know, we're taking the extra care and ensuring that all the side channels are free and clear so that you're not going to get snags when you rip your holster or your gun out of your holster. But also, you know, I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to think about when, if I have to pull and draw my firearm, I don't want my jeans coming up six inches <laughs> because yeah, my belt yeah. And so in that moment, you know, there's there's a lot of other things you probably should be focusing on, essentially eliminating your threat. And so how can we provide the best material and equipment to you so that you're the most confident and the best equipped in that in that situation? And the belt goes a long way. It really does to ensure that holster's gonna stay in place and you're pulling that firearm effectively and quickly. And uh you know, good so yeah, I'm glad you kind of brought the, the mechanics up of, of drawing a firearm because some people just don't think about that, right? They think, you know, um, hey, look, I got a gun, I have a concealed carry permit, or I'm going to open carry, or I don't need a carry permit depending on what state you're in. Sure. Um, I'm just going to put this thing on and I'm going to go. Absolutely. And they don't they don't think about the whole um, when you draw, you are you have forces coming up your body because you're you're yanking something out of your out of a, something attached yeah. to your belt. Yeah. And yeah, that whole pants moving up and down, you want to make sure everything is just in place and secure. Absolutely. And, and, and the thing is like when, you, when you're on the range, you can practice it one way or another a million times over, but in, in a real life scenario, you're not, there's yeah. some variables and factors that we, we try to eliminate that across the board. So make it to where it's it's going to be 100% rigid, 100% of the time. But comfortable. Well, yeah, exactly, and, and comfort's important because you know, for like somebody like me, I used to, I used to, I, I was a consultant, so I was on the road a lot. Sure. So when I sat in my car, I'm the driver of my car. I'm right-handed, so my my holster is on my right-hand side, and that's where my seatbelt buckles in, right? So when I get out of a car, because of all that pressure that's going on around your waist, around the gun, and stuff like that, we things are going to shift. Um, you get out of the car and, and like you said, you, when you're practicing at the range, that's great. But do you practice after you've been sitting in the car with the gun on your hip or getting out of the car when things are moving around? You just don't do that. And that's why you ha have the confidence in the gear. Um, I mean, this is why you just don't go to, you know, Amazon and buy this, you know, padded vinyl type of thing. This is why you actually spend money on your gear because that's what it's there for. I mean, you know, we talked briefly before we're on, um, and I'm going to say it again on the air. Thank you for your service. Um, you can see you're in the Marine Corps there. You understand about trusting your gear. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you, you just, you, you have, have to. to. Um, and you made a good point too, where you said comfort does go a long way. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I'm a big advocate of, you do not carry a firearm to be comfortable. You carry a firearm to be comforted. And so yes. you know, and you have that peace of mind. However, if we can assist in that comfort aspect and you are comfortable, you're going to be more likely to carry a firearm. If you are comfortable, it doesn't uh, hurt you all the time. It's not abrasive. And that, that actually, I, that brings me to one of, one of our holsters that I wanted to talk about. So it was a, uh, was here we, we we came out with these proprietary foam that we're adding onto the back of our holsters, um, and what that I will tell you that was the biggest game changer for me when I put one of these on and it was insanely comfortable and you know I mean I everybody's your your run of the mill typical Kydex polymer holster that you throw on and you know I, I don't know you put it on and you're you're miserable from sec the second that you're on the body I mean it's not. It's digging in your I mean, maybe if I was 106 pounds and, you know, super skinny, it wouldn't be as bad. But I mean, like, it is, it's painful. And it's like, man, that sucks. And it makes me not want to carry a firearm. But it's like, God, I, I hope I don't need it. So for us, it was how can we make the shooter comfortable while still giving them a, a solid, reliable product that they're able to carry with? So that, that's kind of a goal for us over the past couple of years is really addressing the comfort situation, the ergonomics of, of holsters. Because uh, I feel like it is, it is a market that was missing. Um, 
It is. I mean, you know, it, like, go ahead and hold that holster back up again, because at SHOT Show, it was the first time I saw that holster, and I got to play with that holster in your booth. And I started playing, I, I see a backing like that. The first thing I'm doing is I'm pushing against it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there going, of all the holsters I have, none of them have that type of backing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm used to, it, like you say, you know, holsters are, well, like I like to say, holsters are kind of utilitarian. You know, mm -hmm. they have a job to do. But if I have, you know, I'm not a big inside the waistband holster because I don't like the way they feel. Um, first of all, I don't, I don't quite have a body for it. Um, sure. It just depends on what injury I'm managing. Depends on whether how big my food blister is. Sure. <laughs> um, and historically, you know, it sucks. It hurts. It's very. It does. Yeah. It um, does. And that that was a big thing for me. Is you know I I was always in this this torn line, right? So I mean just just personally, I mean we offer a lot of great leather only holsters that that we've run for a long time. They do very well for us, and, and people love them. I think it's a very um, traditionalist look. I think it looks great. I think it's it's comfortable. I mean, depending on the day, I'll wear solely a leather holster, but I was always a kayak guy because I loved retention. I loved, you know, the ability for the firearm to stay. Um, and that was one of the really cool advancements we made as a company was blending the, the polymer side into the leather side for, for the comfort. And uh, you, you get the rigidity. And like for this holster specifically, you actually do have adjustable retention. So these guns aren't going anywhere. I mean, they're, they're in there for you to pull. And some of our even new models, and we'll go into more specifics of them, we even custom mold the polymer to the specific firearm, yet still offer these comfortable vacuums on the back. So it's inherently comfortable. You get that great retention, and you even can hear that, like, audible snap in of the yeah. cavities. Um, and it, and it's really wild. So, And that's... Um and that's what I like. I'm trying to actually. I'm trying to find that holster right now. Um, I know that was in the number flex um, CFC. It's on the Versatech. Yeah, that's what that's what I was trying to get to. Is the Versatech series? Um, come on, Versatech series. There we go. Let me share this out for everybody because I mean that was so. That was just such a game changer for me at shot. Just playing with that holster mm -hmm. going, why has no one thought of it? I mean, everybody has a leather holster that, I mean, even you guys have it. You have the, the typical leather backed holster and things like that. But now you're starting to get into, um, into that, that padding. Yeah. Um, I really just absolutely love, there we go. I got, I have so many tabs open right now for the stuff that we're going to talk about. Um, um, right here, that Comfort Flex, right yeah. there. Um, that was just, it, it, it was the coolest thing. And then I'm like, okay, great, but this is, like you said, you have the retention. When, when I looked at that holster, because you guys had it there and you just had like a, a blue gun in it, and I'm looking at that holster going, okay, great, it's a, you know, generic leather holster with a with a fancy back, and then the second that I saw it had retention, I'm like, yeah, that's 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 definitely something completely different. Sure. Um, because I, uh, I mean, when I wear leather holsters, and I do, I, I'm, I'm a leather guy that got into Kydex later. Sure. Um, you know, with leather holsters, I'm used to the thumb snap, right? Yeah. And then that that was my retention going into Kydex. You get the you get the snap, which is great. But now, you know, like it, it's it goes back to the whole statement I said before. It's utilitarian. Um, you know, it's there. It's plastic. Everyone knows it's plastic. Sure, I can get different plastics and different um, you know different designs and things like that. But I I go back to the thing of. I, I still like leather holsters. I, I like the look of leather. I like the feel of it. Sure. But now you can have the best of both worlds mm -hmm. just in this holster. Well, it's, um, really, it's really nice too because, like, if we, you know, if you look to for me, for me, I, I was kind of in the same boat. I I historically have been a like a polymer guy, and, and I mean, even we go straight into that. Some of our new stuff is solely polymer holsters. But I mean, one of the big things for me is that you know I I love polymer for the rigidity and the durability. Leather, I think, right. is one of the most beautiful looks in the world. But, you know, historically, you know, that, that can wear over time, depending on usage. 
Okay. And so for us, that was such a really interesting thought process of adding that rigidity. And that that polymer actually inlays all the way across here. So there's, there's actually a full piece of polymer that is custom molded in there. And you get firm rigidity. I mean, I cannot break that down. That holster is going to be that shape forever. You're not going to have any any of that wear and tear that's going to shrink the holster or make it any less durable over time because that is a hardened polymer inside the uh, inside the holster. Yeah, and that's that's great. I mean, it, it's funny. Um, it's funny you're talking about uh, you know leather holsters give out over time. They do. Like I um, I came out of the Glock world. And I went into the SIG world. My I started getting weak hands and well, Glocks, you kind of have to conform to a Glock. So I was looking sure. for ergonomics. SIGs just fit my hand. So I went into a SIG uh, 226. Okay. Um, and then, the, you know, I have a, well, I reach for a leather ulcer. You know, obviously this is before uh, Kydex, mm -hmm. uh, before I started wearing Kydex. And then I still have that holster, but... That 226 has also carried my P320 when I got my P320. It's yeah. carried my 229, uh, my, two, my 220, um, because it's not designed to carry those guns. And if it was brand new, those guns would not fit that holster. Sure. But because of the wear over time, I've got one holster that fits all three guns. And again, I'm not worried about the retention because of that thumb snap. Mm -hmm. But I like, uh, ever since I got into, into Kydex, it is very rare that I go into leather because I you get addicted to that snap. You know, I, I put my gun in, you hear that snap, it's very audible. I don't have to look to see, I don't have to mess with a thumb strap. I just know it's there. Um, and then I just go, I don't worry about it then. Yeah, of course. And, and that's the thing is that, that that's what I really love about holsters like our, our COC is you do get that firm retention, adjustable retention but you get that leather back on the side. Um, and so you do get that audible snap and pull that you're looking for in a Kydex holster. And I mean, that's not going anywhere. Um, it is it is custom formed and molded to the individualized environment. So you do, get, you do get fairly addicted to that. And I mean, this sits incredibly well. It just holds very well. It's super durable, super reliable. And this is a brand new product for us. We just came out with this. And, uh, and yeah, you're right, there's, there's really nobody pushing things like this on the market right now. And uh, uh, it's, it's tough. I'll tell you, that's, that's the main reason is it is, it's fairly difficult to do. I mean, it took our, uh, our staff, we, we've been very blessed and we've been working very hard to continuously develop our team. You know, almost 10% of our staff is actually in research and development, continuously growing the product lines and, and trying to be ahead of the, the curve when it comes to innovation in the holster world. And it's a, uh, it's paying off for us. We're, we're doing pretty well. And I, I think that it's a, it's a good testament to see that, that we, we have that strong desire and, and drive for growth um, in that side, because this is, this to me is such a crazy development in the holster space, because this, you know, if you're solely a Kydex guy, you're going to like this. If you're solely a leather guy, you're also going to like this. And if you're somewhere in the middle or you just want to be comfortable, you're going to like this. It's a, it's a wildly interesting and cool product. Um, and I will tell you, I, I uh, may not look like it, but I actually went for a run with this holster the other day. Um, you know, I carry 43X and I, yeah, I threw this holster on and I, I went for a run and it was rock solid. I mean, it just, it just sat there. I was like, man, this is, this is cool. So, um, you know, I think it's a really wild and interesting product for us. Well, and that says something because you, know, you just said you went for a run with that holster and a 43X. The 43X, you know, because of that expanded grip, you have a lot of weight into that into that handle because of the extra the sure. extra bullets. Um, that says a lot right there that you're going out and you have a gun that is just not going to move on you. You you again, it goes back to that trusting your equipment. Sure. You just knew it was going to be there. Sure. Yeah, it did have it had a lot of extra weight. I mean, to, to really give the holster the benefit of the doubt, I, I even used the the Shield Arms fifteen round flush mag in there too. So it's you know, it's, it's a lot of weight on that thing, and it was uh, it was doing a great job. I mean, I had no complaints and no issues with it, um, and so it was it, it was impressive. I was very very you know all of our guys when we come out with a new line, the first thing we do is we issue one to every single person who carries essentially here on, on the side of the office and that we just wear them for weeks and weeks and weeks. And what do we like? What do we hate? What is, and it, it is the smallest bit of difference of, I don't love how the leather lays against this binding right here. We need to change the file a quarter of a millimeter to cut it back a little. I mean, it's very, very 
precise when we get into it. So, I see. And then, like you said, you had ten percent of your staff is in R and D, and um, I know there's going to be people out there going to listen to that comment going, uh, "Yeah, I don't. Why would you ever do research and development into a holster?" Sure. Um, it, that's actually it's actually important because you know I've I've made Kydex holsters. It's it's not hard to do. You know, people think okay. We heat up a piece of plastic, wrap it around a blue gun or around a gun, put it into a press and let it sit there. And then now I have a, a holster. Yeah, but that's not a refined product, right? I mean, I mean, yeah, anybody can make a holster. Um, but the problem is, you know, I can, I can look at that. I, I, you know, like I said, I've made a couple of holsters. They're god awful. They, they look ugly yeah. as hell, yeah. right? Um, they work. Um, you know, at, at the time it was something that I was looking for in a holster that just didn't do. And, um, so that's what I, that's what I did. So to, to give you the background about this is, um, I was looking, I was competing with a, a SIG, oh, well, I was, I still am competing with a SIG P320X5. Sure. Well, there wasn't, until recently there wasn't holsters for that, that gun. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you kind of bought a Kydex holster that you know kind of worked and then put it into your competition rig and you knew it did, it looked like hell on your on your rig yeah. um it, it was functional it passed the muster for safety and you know and i could compete so i started working through mine but um the problem with that is is that you know if i if i got a regular holster off the market i had to start cutting out for a red dot so i just designed this sure, holster absolutely. for a red dot so where I was kind of going with this is that you guys thought about red dots with your optics ready line. Um, yeah, and, and that's the thing that, um, that people don't realize, you know, a, a lot, I don't say people, but a, a lot of companies out there don't realize that red dots are becoming a very big, um, you know, a very big thing for carry. Yeah, and that's why I, you know, that's why I like that you guys are already thinking about, that hey we we're carrying for red dots here we go optics ready yeah for sure um, and w what's funny about this is if we go through your line here it's more than just one holster I mean you have the whole line you've thought about this I mean well if we down to go ahead I was say if you go down you see if you keep scrolling down just a little bit more like things such as you know such as our, our rangers and our rough riders and things like that you know this was. This was really important for us. We, we even made file changes to existing product lines to, you know, that was kind of a, a conversation that we had of like, listen, this is the way the industry is moving. This is the way that products are, or training is being taught for individuals to, to you know, have optics on their pistols. And, and I mean, almost every company out there is selling all of their pistols optics ready. I mean, if they don't have an optic already on it, it's got a plate that you can just unscrew and throw an optic on there in two seconds. So. Yep. You know, we had to have that conversation of like, you know, most of us don't have optics on our pistols. I, I'm a traditionalist, um, and so you know, I'm, yeah. I, you know, I'm yeah. a stock on on some of my pistols, some of my competition stuff. It's it's uh, you know, it's a little spruced up, but I mean, like most of my like daily carry stuff is just is just fairly stock and standard, and so. But that's the way the industry is moving, and when you go to classes now, they're teaching individuals how easy and beneficial it is to use an optic. And, and so we got to make we did. So it's funny because yeah, you say you're a traditionalist. I'm I'm a traditional I'm a traditionalist that's starting to learn to play to, to like the newer stuff. Sure. But even then, like if um, I, I can't really do it on my pistols, you know, my typical carry is a Sig P320 and uh, a 320 three twenty uh, three sixty five XL. Okay. Um, I've had an optic on it. I've had an optic off of it. Yeah. Um, typically I carry with iron sights because, um, you know, I get into that thing of that if I want to draw, you know, did the optic, you know, did it get knocked out of zero things like that? Even though, um, you know, the, the newer red dots, as long as you're not buying a, you know, $30 red dot off of Amazon, um, sure. it goes back to, you know, trusting your gear. But when I go into like my AR, if I have a red dot on my AR, it's co-witnessed. You know, if that if that red dot goes down, I am still looking straight down at my sights. Absolutely. And you know, sights sights don't lie. Um, sure. You know, they you know for for you to knock 
especially on a pistol, on a carry pistol, for you to knock sights off, you know, to get them out of, out of whack, you were sitting there with a punch and a hammer, yeah. banging on the things. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely different. I think that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty hard on a lot of my firearms. I think that that's, you know, I'm a big train, uh, train like to fight kind of guy. And so it's, you know, I'm, I'm pretty rough and tough on a lot of my weapon systems. And I think that, I think that I, I, I tend to have a backup. I, I'm not a huge red dot guy when it comes to when it comes to my pistols. Rifles, yes, all day long. Um, but it's you know, I I don't know, I'm still torn on the pistol side. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny is um so that you know the the red dot is on my my uh, competition gun just because I wanted to start shooting that class, right? Sure. I wanted to move up. Um but yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, I it, all my carry guns. I mean, short of uh, that red dot, I was testing for a company, so I carried it on my carry guns, and and yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm I am hard on gear. I mean, down to the point where uh, the company I used to work for, they would come up and ask me like, what case did I have on my iPad? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is the this is the case I run on my iPad. Why? I'm like, oh, we want to get an iPad for our kid. I'm like, yeah, right. well, okay, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. You, you guys know I beat the hell out of everything, um, but yeah, pistols. I, I'm, 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 especially my carry pistols. I'm very traditional on that because uh, I've never had, um, I've never had the sights go off on me. Sure, um, sure. But anyways, I, I we can go, we can go down there. Well, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm in the same boat. My, my also, I, I guess that my. My thought process is, is uh, you know, I if I'm going to the range, I just have like a fun range gun, then that that's a little different for me. But my my other thought process is that you know if I if I'm concealing, it is typically I'm concealing in case something happens, and I, I have to be I have to be comfortable with losing that for a extended period of time. God forbid something happens, and I you know I do have to utilize that firearm. You know that's not that's yeah. You know I carry 43 X because if God forbid I do have to use my firearm, I'm, I'm okay without my 43 X for a while. You know, I'm not going to run a staccato C2. Yeah. You know, the hell out of that gun. So, I, yeah. I mean, I like my Glock. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you because, um, you know, I carry I carry that P365 XL. Sure. Um, if for some reason, you know, if I need if I need to use that to, to, to protect myself or someone else, don't get me wrong, it's going to suck. Yeah, for sure. But... Um, I also have a P365. <laughs> I use the yeah, exact same yeah. holster. Um, as long as I get my holster back, I'm, I'm back in business, you know, hours later. Sure. Um, and yeah, no, I, I get it. Yeah, I'm not going to, you know, I used to carry my my 229. And, um, you know, going from a, 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 you know, a $500 Glock to a, you know, eight or $900 SIG, that's going to hurt. I mean, yeah. I... Um, but yeah, exactly. You're not, you know, I'm also not going to carry my, my tricked out X5. It's, sure. you know, gonna, it's got, I have over, you know, almost about 1500 into that gun. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, 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 you learn really quick not to carry, not to carry your most expensive thing. You have a carry, you have a carry gun. Um, you know, uh, when I, when I used to be an FFL and I used to do stereo coding and, okay. and um, people are like, well, you're hard on gear. I mean, what do you think about slide wear and stuff like that? I'm like, I don't care. I'll sandblast it, just repaint it. It's yeah, you know, it's a, it's a tool, um, and that's what that tool is. You know, that gun is not designed to be a safe gun, uh, a safe queen. It's designed to to work. I trust it, and you know, protect my life. I don't care what it looks like at that point. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I think that I think that that is always kind of a weird a weird thing for me in the end. That's something I've I've struggled to understand. I mean, I get it. You spend a thousand dollars on a, on something, you want it to stay and look pretty. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's got to be used as a tool. I mean, I I um, I'm a big um, I'm a big like I'm a big rifle guy. I shoot a lot of rifles. Um, yeah. But you would be coming from the Marines. You, you yeah, uh, you're you're a rifle per Yeah, you're a rifleman. <laughs> yeah, true. And in my in my last my last role was a uh, CFO with Sire Arms, and uh, and so I, oh, wow. I AEGs. I my the the 
firearm I keep in my car is is an Abeski in four PDW. Like it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pistol, three hundred blackout. But I mean, it's it it gets used and it gets beaten and it gets. You know, I want my I want to be comfortable with my gear. I want to utilize my gear. I want to, and that's the thing is that that's what I love about first security is that it's you know our holsters are nice and they will stay beautiful for a long time, but they're meant to be beaten up. They're meant to be be abused and. Um, one of the things that I always I always say, and it's it's there's there's really two main ways of tanning leather um, within a within the leather industry. There's um, there's chromium tan and there's veg tan. So chromium tan is chromium. They're using chromium. It's a harsh chemical. It's yep. um, it's cheaper, um, but it it yeah, it's a little bit more abrasive. Um, we yeah. use veg tan, um, and veg tan leather is vegetable. It's it's vegetable oils, I say. So. Um, there's obviously some other steps that go into that, but, um, but it's, it, my thing is this, and I, I am not this way. I, I'm consistently at the range, um, at least once a week. Um, I'm always shooting my firearms, but for me, and it's unfortunate, and if you are in the podcast, I highly recommend it this you to not be this person, but the average American could, could buy a pistol by, if, if the pistol were to explode on round 51, they would never know because they buy a pistol, they buy a box of ammo. They throw it in the holster and they set it in their nightstand for the next six years. And it's like, you know, one, get out there, train, utilize the equipment, beat it up, you know, get comfortable with it. But for us, that veg tan is not going to deteriorate your firearm over time. So that is something you're really worried about. Leather does, especially veg tan leather, is really, it's not corrosive. It's not going to deteriorate your finish, whether that's a nitride, a glue finish, whatever it is. Um, yeah. And that's important for us. Well, it's funny because I've, I've talked about um, on this podcast and other podcasts, you know, we, we keep hearing the statistic of, you know, 5 million brand new gun owners over, you know, over the, the you know, the pandemic and stuff like that. Everybody was buying a gun. And, you know, I was, I've talked to people, I go, one of my biggest fears is that, you know, we have people going out buying their first gun, buying their token box of bullets, it sits at a nightstand. They don't use it. It's, um, you know, you sure. need to understand how to use this thing, you know, and going out to a range, shooting, you know, a mag or two is not training, right? I mean, yeah, you're getting familiar with the gun. That's great. But, you know, if we need to draw our firearm, you know, have you, tr have you tried doing that with your heart rate around, I don't know, sure. something around 120? Um, yes. because it's going to go there in about a second. I mean, all sorts of logic and sense of fine motor skills is out the window. And, it, and someone phrased it to me like this a while ago. If, if hypothetically I told you that there was a, a, a bicycle race, and you had to be, you and I had to get into a bicycle race against each other. Would you train? Yeah, maybe. Okay, fine. Now let me phrase it to you this way. If we had to get into a bicycle race, and if you get second, you could probably die. Would you train? Yeah, oh, probably yeah. Train, right. <laughs> yeah. Now, the thing is, is that 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 when it comes to carrying a firearm, if you're second place in a in a bad event, you can die. And so it's yeah. you have to train. You have to be comfortable with your gear and your equipment. You have to trust your equipment and know that it's going to work. Your bike, I certainly would check the chain if I knew that I was potentially going to pass away from, yeah. from losing a race. So for us, that's that's so important. And I think that uh, from I come from the firearms manufacturing side. I mean. I'll tell you, firearms manufacturers aren't running 600 rounds through a rifle before they sell it to you. They, they no. crew fire a certain amount of rounds. And I mean, it's what if your weapon has a, has a rough breaking period? What if it's, it's not functional and you're not going to know until round 200, 300? You know, that's stuff you need to work through with a firearm. And that's, you know, taking that from the firearm back to a holster, um, you know, anybody's holster. Um, you know, we have retention in these holsters now. Mm -hmm. We may need to adjust retention. Just because the holster gets sent to you doesn't mean that it's set to the retention for the way you want to draw it. Um, sure. You know, understanding how to adjust a holster and then using that holster, you know, knowing that, hey, if I'm running a Kydex holster, there's a certain amount of force to get past the retention and then it releases and then I am I'm ready to go. Sure. Um, Go out well, and you're a person. I mean, we can set it to a factory spec. I mean, we can set it to a, a certain draw weight at every single time. But the thing is, is even in, even in completely polymer pistol or, or polymer holsters, 
I mean, this is why we have to have this adjustment in here because I can move. This is it's a thin, it's a thinner palm. I mean, there's nobody's making that thick of a holster for each each side. So like, you know, say that uh, you wear this holster, I wear this holster, and you know, you tighten your belt too decently tight, and I just absolutely torque my belt. This is going to compress. And so that's going to change your draw weight. I mean, each person is different. And if you're not taking that out to the range or you're not running dry fire exercises at your house, I hope to God you never have to get in a situation that you're going to need to actually draw your firearm effectively because that is so important to understand what do I need to do? How do I need to do it? You know, we, we try to take those extra steps to ensure, you know, your sight channel is always going to be free and clear. But, you know, like how how it affects people differently. I mean, you have to practice. I mean, you also don't know, I mean, and this is one thing um, with holster companies is it's not like, you know, when SIG comes out with a gun and then, you know, I don't know, like, like SIG likes to do, uh, you know, six months later they change the gun. Sure. Um, rather than perfecting it, you kind of pay the beta test their gun for them. Sure, genius. You know, that next, the next, the next issue, you know, the next version of that gun might be slightly bigger, might sure. be slightly smaller. Sure. It's not like you as a manufacturer are going to know that, right? I mean, SIG doesn't go to every holster manufacturer and go, hey, guys, we changed the specs for our guns. Sure. Um, so, you know, making sure that you understand that, you know, if you have, even even if you have a, a holster and you buy the next, the, you know, the, the next version of that gun, you still need to make sure that thing works. And yeah, stuff for sure. Into that it, it definitely tweak and change. I mean, the, the thing is, is that um, I mean, even very small, minute details that the manufacturers change really do have significant impacts when it comes to retention of a holster. And uh, yeah. and it, it definitely changes. That's, uh, you know, that's why we have an obscenely large credit card bill every month because R&D guys keep buying every new gun that comes out on the market so that they can, they can ensure that it works. And, you know, it's uh, what's so frustrating is that you know, it's it's you know, if they could they could seracote it. It's like, well, we gotta test it, so I gotta buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's uh, it's who they are as people, and I'm glad they are that way because for me, it's it's you know, there's a lot of holster manufacturers out there. I, you know, I, we I will tell you, we I'm not I don't know who they are. I'm not gonna say any names, but we're not gonna be one of them. We don't test with blue guns only. We are gonna purchase every single firearm that comes out. And we're going to run it. We're going to carry it. We're going to wear it. Um, you know, we have an FFL so that we can do that. We can get these firearms and we can actually run real guns in them, take them to the range. And, and our guys are very, you know, you know, we don't just shoot because we like to shoot. We will take our products out, new products out to the range, and we will run them. We'll run them hard. We have to. So, well, just something you said there, which is absolutely amazing. Versicarry has an FFL. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, uh, I know, I, I've talked to a lot of holster companies, right? You are the first holster company that I've talked to that said that, that they've had an FFL just so they can get guns in and testing. Um, sure. I, I know a couple of the companies like you're talking about, they test with blue guns mm -hmm. because I had mm -hmm. bought, um, I bought a, I bought a holster. You know, it, it's funny as I looked at specs on their webpage and I'm going, this holster is not going to work. I know it's not going to. So it was for it was for my Sig uh, 220. Now 220 is the 45 version of the Sig Classic. It's big. It's heavy. It's you know because of being 45, the specs are a little bit bigger. Sure. They go, oh yeah, this is this this holster is good for the the 226 and the 220. I'm sitting there going, no way in hell. Okay. <laughs> uh, but but let's get it in, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. when it didn't work, yeah. um, went went through the customer service, and they're like, "But it should." I'm like, "It doesn't." Uh, yeah. Would you yeah. like to see the video of it? <laughs> and yeah. but that's that's it's what I like hearing. It's important. Yeah, that's, and, you know, I, as as uh, you know that that is what we do. Is is you know our guys are consistently. Uh, we have great relationships with some local dealers and some great uh, manufacturers as well. Um, just just to get new products in and, and to test them and to make sure that it's working right, it's it's functional, it's operational. We're not going to throw that because I mean, one thing you're never going to learn with a blue gun is, am I throwing this out of battery? Is it is it going to you know yeah. into that? You know, you're never going to know unless we're actually running these guns in real life. And so that's a big thing for us is is to ensure that we are using 
actual firearms and the development and testing of this. And I think that a, I think a big reason is that I, I, I find in my time in the firearms industry that it's a, uh, it's really a bunch of guys who, who are kids at heart and, you know, we just love, <laughs> we love doing it. And so, you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's, you know, as much as I'd like to, I'd say probably 90% of the reason why we have an FFL is to test and develop. I think the other 10 is so we can just get cool stuff and have fun. But I mean, <laughs> you know, maybe it's the other way around, but I mean, it, it definitely has become beneficial for us in the development process. It's a fringe benefits, right? Yeah, right. That's all it is. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a fringe benefit for employee retention, so that way you can come out with good oh, products that fit that fit and work for me as the customer. That is all it is. That's all that's, it is. That's, that's, that's kind of evil genius right there. Okay. That's a good way to sell it to the owner, but he uh, he's on board, so. <laughs> so that's great. So... Um, so, like we were talking about, uh, I want to bring up uh, one thing. Let's see here. Uh, let's see if we get this wrong. Pocket carry. Um, you have a couple of pocket carry. Um, mm -hmm. And people don't think about pocket carry all that much. I know I have it here. Um, here it is, pocket bolsters. So, this is the kind of the, the cool thing about pocket carry is, most pocket carry um, holsters I've seen, they, I mean, they're, they're either Kydex or they're plastic or not vinyl, I don't want to say vinyl, but some type of, um, some type of not natural material. Yeah. Um, whereas you guys, even, even going into your pocket carry, you, you even have to style into the pocket carry, right? Like, yeah, of course. Right there. That, that adjustable pocket carry where, you know, you can put a different wing on and, you know, hey, you could have just put a solid piece of plastic on there, right? Sure. But no, <laughs> I mean, you, sure. you, you cut it out, it's a little bit lighter because of the cutouts, plus you kind of kept that angle mm -hmm. of your, of, you know, where you cut away the leather of your other holsters. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of where I, I kind of like going with that is just that, you guys just didn't go, hey, you know, it's pocket, no one's going to see it. You're like, nah, we're, we're going to do something different. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's still going to look good. I mean, and, and for us, it's very functional. It looks very good. Um, that little hook on the edge of the uh, of that wing right there is actually very it's very beneficial for, you know, pulling the firearm. I mean, it's it's a very versatile holster. For us, it's, uh, yeah, it's going in a pocket. It's, it, it theoretically doesn't have to look good, but for us, it's that's important for us. I mean, it's it's... It's who we are. It's kind of our image. All, all of our, even our inside the waistband holsters, they look great. Like for, for yeah. I mean, the one that I was showing you earlier is like a carbon fiber Kydex over the top. And it's like, that, man, that's going on the inside of, it's going on the inside of somebody's pants. I mean, what's the, what's the point? I mean, we could have made it look as ugly as possible. But for us, it, it, it has to carry over that look of, of who we are. See, and that, it's funny because um, I, what, when I get, Kydex holsters. It's funny. It's I get the I get the carbon fiber. Just sure. it, 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 no one's ever going to see. You know, well, not hopefully no one ever really sees my holster because it is concealed carry. Sure. But I don't know. I spend the extra. It's only like a buck more, and I I get the carbon fiber just because. Well, it's different. Yeah, you know, that's just I just want to be a little different. There it is, and then um, yeah, like right there. Like you're saying, they have that carbon fiber print right there, and just yeah. that's just the cool thing is that you guys. You know, for me, if I was just, you know, because I'm making holsters at home and just screwing around, I wouldn't think of that, right? I'd just go, uh, what do I have laying around? You know, I'm going to do that. That'll work. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and that hook, uh, that is, uh, it's hard to explain how important it is for that hook to, because it just grabs. Yeah. So that way it helps your draw. Um, and these are all kind of things that, you know, like I said, I was seeing it at your booth at SHOT. Um, but, you know, I was so, like I said, I was so used to this thing. When I came walking in, I'm just like, uh, yeah. like, just just amazed going, uh, I don't know what to look at next. Yeah. Um, and for us, and that's, like, that's the important thing is it's in the details. For us, it's, if we're going to put our name on it, it's going to be right. And I, I think that, you know, we're, we're, doing everything we can to get product out the door as fast as possible to individuals, but I mean, it's going to be right. And it's, you know, it's, 
it is a premium product. I think that you know, I think that you there were able to produce well enough to to keep our price points very competitive. But it is a premium product, and I and I can assure you the 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 money for us is in the details. And for us, it is it is so important for people to have that attention to detail. Every step of our okay, I'm a process lead, process manufacturer. Uh, and so, um, strong like Six Sigma background, and one of the biggest things that I focus on is quality. Um, and yeah. I'm not a person to send product out just to send product out. We are going to do it right. It's going to be it's going to be right because God forbid you have to use it one day. It needs to be right. And so, for our standpoint, we have strong, we have strong, strong quality checks. Um, every single part that gets manufactured in every step of the process. I'll tell you, this is a, a twenty or thirty step process in the manufacturing of this product alone. Uh, it's very complex manufacturing. There's a lot of different intricacies in the inside that we add. Every single step of the process gets what we call a first, fifth, and last. So we run small lot sizes, say of only 20. The first product that they manufacture at any step gets stopped and checked by quality control. The fifth, they stop. They get it checked by quality control and sign off. And the last, they stop and they get it checked by quality control. Just so quality can come in and really understand, hey, I know that this is a good product. And then even after all of that, and it gets checked by different quality individuals all the way through the production line at every step, even before it leaves the door, it gets stopped one more time and looked at by quality to really dive into the product to ensure, you know, we don't have any skip stitches or we don't have any um, defects on the specs and we do have appropriate retention. And um, we, we really take pride in the small details of the manufacturing process. And uh, I think that's that's what sets us apart. I mean, there's, there's an easy way to just, you know, if I wanted to, we, if we wanted to hop into the, to this game, you know, five, six, seven years ago, it's super simple to just fold a piece of polymer over, throw a clip on it, cut it off, and run on a buffing wheel and send it out the door. That's not who we are, and that's not who we're going to be. And so we, we really take the time to ensure that every single every single cut we're making on the top is uniform. So you're not going to get any two holsters that are different. They're completely uniform. The process has been taken, uh, the care has been taken to ensure it's 100% right. We have the right fixtures. We have everything in place so that we're producing a very consistent and quality part out the door at the time. Now, I'm going to back up a little bit okay. on what you were talking about. Um, what belt were you in Six Sigma? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's great. So I, 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 know, I know what Six Sigma is. You know what Six Sigma I is. Knew. The audience doesn't know what Six Sigma is and the so, understanding of the different degrees. Uh, black. So uh, thank you for asking. So you no, went, you went far. I did. I did. So it was, it was actually my time in the Marine Corps. I trained with, uh, I, we did a, um, in the Marine Corps, they brought in guys with like Toyota and they, they did a lot of really cool training with us. Um, and, and I was able to push a lot more on the backside too. It's been great. I love it. Um, I love just looking at a process and saying, you know, this there's never, it's the unattainable goal, right? Versicary is not a perfect company and we will never be a perfect company. We are always going to strive to be closer to perfect. Um, but I think the second companies think that they have a perfect product, that's a cancer in the company. So for us, we realize that this is one of the coolest holsters on the market. It is awesome. It is sweet. It's comfortable. It's durable. It's reliable. What can we do better? And that is why we throw 10% of our staff at R&D. That is why we're always trying to look ahead and always trying to develop because the way it's been done forever may not be the right way. It may not be the best. Yeah. It works. Cool. What can we do better? How can we make it better? How can we improve who we are and the products we're pumping out the door? And how can we make cooler and more innovative and dynamic products for our customer base? So yeah, that's, the, uh, that's the goal that we always try to push for. That's awesome to hear because, I mean, for me, uh, I do cybersecurity consulting. So okay. we... You know, going back, I used to work for a defense contractor. Um, right. That's going back uh, 20, oh, 20 years ago. Um, that's where I got introduced into Six Sigma. And, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, 20 years ago, I'm still like, you know, I'm a lot younger. And I'm sitting there going, I don't, I don't get this. Why, why are we doing this? And then as I get older and go through my career, I understood, you know, I understood more because I became, um, you know, a, more educated about things, you know, where, yeah. you know, when I get, I start leading a staff and um, I, I asked him, you know, you said something very important there just because it's done this way historically doesn't mean it's the right way or 
maybe it was the right way back then. It's not now. Wow. Um, and then growing past that, I've always encouraged my employees to think outside the box. Wow. Um, you know, is there a better way we, 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 we should be doing this? And then, you know, for you going through, uh, going all the way up the black belt, which is, I mean, you, you put a lot of time in the segment to do that. Um, that is, that tells me the, the level of commitment to quality. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's huge. Of course. And it's, it's so important. I mean, it's, I'm a big advocate of, a, it's always cheaper to be an architect than it is a doctor. I mean, I can, yeah. if I can fix a problem mm -hmm. while I'm building it, that's yeah. fun. You know, that's, that's much better than having a problem or a product go out and us having to remedy a problem on the back end. And so, uh, now granted, Everybody still goes to a doctor. It's still great to have those daily checkups and, and, and ensure that we have good quality and we're not we're not wasteful in our production process. And um, and we, we run a lean company, a strong, strong quality and customer service driven company. And it's uh, it's really important for us. I mean, it's um, it, it's ever changing. It's ever evolving. I think that world's ever changing and ever evolving. But for us, I think that it's um, you know we have some guys that come with these out of the box, wild ideas for holsters, uh, belts, whatever, whatever it might be. And, and for us, it's we chase it. We have to chase it. We have to try yeah. it. And, and, and it may not work. It's okay. And, you know, we fail all the time when it comes to the R&D process. And I think that um, General Stanley McChrystal said that effective leadership will allow you to fail yet not become a failure. And yeah. I think that if we, if we stop, trying to develop and grow and change and, and become something new and innovative and different, then we're, we're stagnant. You're either moving forwards or backwards. And so versus carries really push themselves to consistently be moving forwards um, when it comes to new product and it comes to um, growth and development and, and trying new things. I mean, the, the firearm space is ever changing. We have to change with it. We have to work with it. We have to try to lead the way we have to work with manufacturers of firearms to discuss what you can be doing better. How can I make a safer, more reliable, comfortable product for the consumer? That's what it's all about. So, yeah, I mean, and that's kind of where, that, that's all the feeling I got with talking to everybody at your booth at SHOT is like, you know, again, I go back to, this is what I thought Versicare was. Sure. Um, like, okay, it's just funky little plastic clip. Okay, great. And then I'm like, well, no, I mean, that's not the way Versa Carry is, Go, you know, going in, seeing the different products, going, hey, this is really cool, and then getting to actually talk to people. I mean, let's face it, um, you know, you can stand anywhere in the country, throw a rock, and hit a, hit a holster manufacturer. Yeah, um, a lot of them, and, like a lot of manufacturers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I love that. It's a great yeah. analogy because, I mean, they just it, – it's like all of a sudden – Stop, people stopped making ARs and started making holsters. Um, you know, they, they just popped up everywhere. And yeah. like, you know, like I said before, I've, I've made them. They're not hard to make. No, no. Um, but making them correct, you know, making them look nice, you know, yeah, going yeah, yeah. those further steps, that's a completely different thing. I mean, I know of a holster manufacturer that was kind of almost catty corner from your booth at, at SHOT Show. Um, you know, they're just stamping holsters out, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, that might work, right? I mean, that, that might work for their people, but like you said, your, your VersaCarry is a premium product. And for me, I don't mind spending a little bit more money for quality, especially when I'm talking about carrying a gun to, to for protection, right? I mean, that's not where you, that's not where you go cheap. <laughs> you know, you, yeah, sure. anytime you're talking about anything life-saving or uh, protection and things like that, that's not where you skimp. You well, I find that problem not, not solely in the whole school world. I think that's that's a big problem uh, with the consumer base in the firearm space, too. I mean, I think that, you know, there's there's a big push and component for, um, hey, what, what firearm do you recommend? But then they put a price tag for $300. Yeah. $300, you could probably get shot. I mean, like, I... For me, it's, it's if, this is, if I'm protecting myself and my family, you know, I'm I'm gonna put my money into something that I know and can trust, and yep. I know is incredibly durable. I mean, from from everything that we do, I'll, I'll tell you the to the leather we use, we're we're checking every single piece of leather to ensure proper thickness, material, every single hide that that we use, we are hand inspecting and cutting out imperfections and impurities in the hide. Um, 
every single piece goes through a quality control checkpoint. And, and I will tell you from, we use a very thick and very durable thread. I can't, I can't break it with my own hands just like trying to pull it apart. Um, and, and I will tell you from trying to cut open a, um, a holster to, to just, you know, really dive in to see the inner workings. That, that sucks. That's hard to do. I mean, the, the, the amount of quality and time that we put into, into this is, is pretty different. And I mean, a, a sewing machine, uh, you know, because essentially it's what we're doing. We're sewing these holsters together. You know, a sewing machine loves to work with leather. It loves to work with thread. It's really hard to find one that loves working with leather and kydex. And, and yeah. multiple pieces of leather and kydex, it's thick. And I mean, we we burn through needles. We are really tough. And, and we, we have to purchase wildly expensive machinery that is capable of doing what this can do. Because it's, it's a very hard raw material to manufacture into a holster but for us it's you know that investment is worth it for us because of what we get in the end result so now we've been kind of dancing around this a little bit mm -hmm. um not that not purposely we just kind of happen where are your holsters made 100 percent of our holsters are made in bryan texas um, there you go. We, we do everything we can to to ensure it's a it's a u.s made product and, and we're very happy to do that um, it's, you know, certainly a lot more expensive to manufacture here. Um, but for us, it's, it's important. And, uh, and, you know, we, we do a hard push where we push really hard to, uh, to hire veterans too. I mean, it's, it, that's kind of my thing, you know, it's, <laughs> but, but we make 100% of our products here in the U S. Um, and we're, we're very, very proud of that. So that's awesome. I mean, uh, and I, I agree. Uh, you know, I, I, when I used to have a staff and stuff like that, I loved working with veterans. Um, I've talked, to, I've talked to some veterans that are coming out of the service, mm -hmm. going in the private industry. Well, I've always been in private industry, and it's they, they're like, I don't understand. You know, I, I don't know why, um, I don't know why a company would want to hire me. I don't have the experience. I'm like, you got a crap load of experience. You just don't know how to bring that to the surface to the way a, ma a hiring manager would look for it. Exactly. Like, well, I, you know, I was a, you know, I, I, you know, I carried a rifle or, you know, I, yeah. I, I was in logistics. It doesn't matter. I don't care about that stuff. That's, mm -hmm. that's all important. But yeah. hey, you, you're a sergeant. Yeah. You have leadership experience. Why are you not bringing that to the surface? Sure. Um, it's, and I, I mean, that, you do a very terrible job of, of teaching those individuals how to translate that experience into real world experience. Um, and, and a big thing for me is that I, I, I kind of caught a little bit of heat uh, for this in, in my past, but I, I was always a big advocate of, uh, I, I don't owe, I'm a, I'm a veteran myself, veteran of the Marine Corps, disabled veteran. Um, and, and, and for me, it's, um, I, this sounds terrible, so let me finish, but like, I don't necessarily care for the fact that somebody served because they have served. I then correlate their experience and I hold them to a higher level of, uh, of responsibility. And so for me, it's, it's not so much that, you know, I, I certainly don't owe anybody anything because they have served, but because they have, I, I then assume that they are to able to be held to a higher standard. And, uh, uh, and it, it works really well for us. We have a, a great Marine Corps veteran works over at our, uh, one of our departments. Uh, he's the only team lead that is in an offsite department with us. And, um, I have no hesitation in the world working with this guy. You know, he's very much a, I'm going to tell you one time and it's done and it's going to be done right. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I love that. I think that that's a really strong mentality we've pushed across all of our employees here at First Carry is that, you know, if, if we're putting our name on it, it's going to be right. Uh, it has to be right. It's going to be perfect. And, and, you know, we, I can teach somebody to work harder, faster, smarter. I can't teach somebody to care. And, and for yeah. that, people that I love about my staff is that we have people who genuinely care about the product and the process. Um, and it's, it's important. I mean, that's a, that's a, an intangible that people don't really understand about, you know, putting a product together, whether that product is a physical product, whether it's, a, you know, uh, for me in, in, in the cyber world, putting together, you know, either a firewall, whatever, right? There are certain things that you can't touch. I mean, I, I know, um, you know, with, with, with working with veterans, mm -hmm. they're, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna work, they're gonna work their ass off, right? Mm -hmm. 
they have they have a mission. They're gonna they're gonna achieve their mission. If for some reason they don't achieve that mission, it's not an excuse, mm -hmm. right? This is what happened. We're gonna go through it. We're we're gonna get together. And I'm look, mistakes happen. Every they do, right? It's it's what you do with it um, okay. afterwards, and and I that's what that. I like about people that have served. Um, and first of all, they have my respect for serving. Second of all, they have my respect because I know um, I know what's been ingrained into them for, I mean, it doesn't matter where you are in that chain. You sure. have a leadership position. Sure. And that's what makes them so different, you know, so different and so worthy of hiring. Um, yeah, and I, I wish more companies asset. understood that. I think it's a valuable asset, and I think one of the one of the coolest mentalities I found in, in hiring vets here in the past was uh, things are not going to go right. They're going to there are times when things are going to suck, and uh, and I think that they are uh, very well versed on how to handle that. And I think what's what's great is that you know there's not a lot of dwell time on the on the frustration. I think that they, yeah. they have this ability to say, "Well, that sucks. What do I do about it? How do we yeah. move it? Where do we address?" And um, it's such an important mindset mentality to have. And, and you don't have to sort of have that kind of mentality. Certainly a lot of individuals that I work with no. don't have a prior service, but they have that mentality. And it's, uh, it's very helpful. Um, you know, I, I think we're, we're really blessed here with a great staff. That is, is they just, they're just good people. They work hard. And uh, it, I think it was much in the product for me. I mean, it's, it's, we're not just machine operators. We're not just, you know, forming holsters or, or stamping out holsters like for us it's i mean this is a craftsmanship i mean this this is we're taking raw leather and we're conforming it into finished goods and we're taking you know polymers and we're custom forming them and then uh adhering them to different types of leather in different ways and i think that it's it is a craftsmanship and i think that you can genuinely tell when somebody doesn't care versus when they do care in the process and i mean it's 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 wildly important to watch and um it's something I like. You know, there's a lot of our stuff that is that is still done by hand. It has to be. It's just there's too many things that can go wrong in a in a, a different kind of sewing operation. So it's a lot of stuff still has to be done by hand. And, and you have some guys who've been here for many many years who have done this the same way for many years. See, and I like I like what you're talking about about craftsmanship. You're not a manufacturer. You're you're a bunch of craftsmen putting this together. Um, you know, if we're talking about a Kydex holster, well, Kydex is a manufactured product right and generally when you get a sheet of kydex it's going to be the exact same sheet as the sheet before it and the sheet after it right there's always so much that could go wrong with kydex but now you're talking about leather and you talked about earlier about the leather where you cut out the bad sections there's going to be bad section it was it was a living animal right skin. It's <laughs> I mean, skin. it's skin yeah exactly it's skin it's not going to be perfect yeah. um and then Understanding to look at it. I mean, some companies to, to cut corners, they go, yeah, well, you know, that, that imperfection, it's not that really big of a deal, right? Yeah. You guys like, no, no, we're, not it's going to be, it, it, it's, it's, it's our name on that thing, and you guys are taking that seriously. And 10 times out of 10, I'll throw the trash before I send it out. You know, and, and for me, this was, this was, you know, I, I, I would say I told you I came from, from Steyr, which is a, uh, it's, a, it's a machine process, it's manufacturing. It's, uh, yeah. you know, there is some craftsmanship that does take place into that, you know, the, the fitment of stocks and things like that. But I mean, it is, it is, we're, we're cutting metal to make firearms. I mean, it's essentially what it is. And so uh, that was one of the hardest things when, when I transferred over to Versicary was, was walking through with the owner who's, who's been in leather for many, many, many years. Well, we're in the heart of Texas. We're just northwest of, northwest of Houston. I mean, it's, it is, it is, this is a place to, to work with leather. And I, I, I relocated for this position. I was out of Birmingham, Alabama. I moved out here to, uh, to Bryan, Texas. And, um, you know, when I'm, I'm talking to the owner about, you know, we have these, the beveling on the sides of the belt, you know, we're, we're taking belts and, uh, and, uh, we're, we're beveling down the edges to, to this certain style and it's you know well what is our go what is our no-go is what i'm asking you know what is what is a pass what is what is not a pass and i can't tell you how confused i was by the answer of it's just a feel you've got to be able to feel and i said well how do i quantify that means you don't you can't yeah it's a feel you have to understand you have to feel the material and know the material and how it how it held holds up together i could have leather that's this thick and just in the feel of it i'm going to say well this is bad leather well on paper 
It meets the thickness. It meets the color. It meets the standards. It's it's fine. But no, it's a feel thing that we're able to feel and say, no, I, I don't feel good about this. Um, then we're we're more than happy to scrap that amount of leather and throw it in the trash because we don't want this, like I said, this end product getting to a customer where the belt now deviates because it's not structurally the same as every other belt that we manufacture. And it's you know that's not going to be the reason somebody has a has a bad time in a in a bad situation. Um, the gear is going to be gear you can trust. So there was something there that I saw on you. It was just absolutely amazing to see. You were feeling that belt, and you're talking about it. you got to feel it. You had a smile on your face as you're working that belt. Sure. Sure. Um, it's, I mean, it, and that just kind of, I, I was. It just happened to be that I zoomed in and gave you the whole screen when that when that was going on, and I'm just like, you, you like what you do. Um, this not. is not. This is not a job. This is. No. This is. A, this is your life. Yeah, I care about it, and and that's the thing is that you know, like I said, I can teach somebody to work harder, faster, stronger. I cannot teach somebody to care. Um, and, and for me, it's you know, it it is, it is interesting. I will say that I I, I didn't. I love when companies do things well. Um, you know, I think that 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 to me is a. Uh, I'm a big bourbon collector. I I love collecting. Uh -huh. I love companies that do things well. I love the time they take into into the process. Uh, that's what I love about Styers. Styers care of the process, and, and for you know, you know, there's there's a difference in driving, you know, a Honda Civic and a McLaren. I mean, you can just tell yeah. the craftsmanship that goes into it, and I think that Versacare really takes time to care of the process. I mean, like it's it's. You know, from my end, when I when I first sat down with our QC manager, I think that was a that was a learned love um, because I was confused at first. I'll be honest with you. When I first came on, I was I was looking for hard facts. I needed go and no go. What is my standard? Yeah. What's my what's my tolerance here? And um, and working with our QC manager Ellen, she does a great job. She uh, you know she would kill a product. I said, this is this is stupid. Why are you killing? This is a good product. I wouldn't notice this, and I'm the customer. I would never notice that. And she says, it doesn't matter. And it, it took me a few days to really understand, a few weeks, months, to really understand why that's important. Um, and now now it's, now it's I get to look like the, the weird guy when I have somebody new who starts to say, all right, let's see what I worked hard on. I said, I don't doubt that. But it's dead well, because of the feel. It's not right. I'll tell you, that there's one thing. Now, I, I, admittedly, I've only been really watching your web page for the past, what, four months. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when I was starting to get ready to go to shot and all that stuff, I've never seen a blemish product for sale. Yeah, yeah, we uh, it's it's our name, man. I, I feel weird about it. I I still feel weird about it. I think that it's uh, certainly there's a lot of them. I can tell you, there's a lot right now. I mean, you you pull a you pull a um, you know a holster out of a sewing machine and you kind of scratch the leather pretty bad on the needle. I mean, it happens. It happens all the time. It's you know, we had guns at Steyr we killed. You know, for us, there's yeah. there are blemish products. There's a ton of them, and it's but it's our name. It's like you know, I'm not, I'm I don't want to send out you know our, our seventy yeah. percent. You know, you, you got to get the right product, and you know, God forbid something gets through. I mean, that that's our name, and it, you know, it, it happens it happens to everybody, and, and it's something that we we get to deal with. And, and for me, I take a strong pride in handling those personally. You know, if there's something not right about what we did, I want I want to handle it. I want to talk to the customer. I want wrong and how we can do it better. Awesome. Now, one thing on your webpage that um, I, I, I thought was kind of cool okay. is bundles. Yeah. You guys sell a bundle now. Um, yeah, you, know, you can get the belt, the holster, and I mean that is that's kind of cool because you know earlier we were talking about the importance of um, you know making sure that you have a, a belt and you know the why the belt's good and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But now you kind of you can, you guys kind of take the talk. Uh, talk. Wow, I'm really getting tongue tied today. <laughs> you you took the whole thought process out of it. I can get a belt, a holster, and a mag carrier, mm -hmm. and not think about it, and have Ooh. quality product. Absolutely, and I think I think it's important because I think I don't know. It's just. You know, you can, you can kind of piece it together for us. It's we know that these products work well together. We know that they're they're very functional, and they, I mean, they look good. I, I'll be honest, with you, they look good together. And so for us, it's um, 
you know, like if you're on our bundles page, you see a lot of those, like premium lines, you see a lot of those like same similarities across the board from like the design standpoint. I mean, you know, you see like the cutouts for the polymers, you see the cutouts on the belts, you see the cutouts in the bag carriers, you know, that's stuff that, you know, that takes extra time for us to manufacture, but I think it looks good if you're looking at like that premium side. You see that, you know, that compound archangel and stuff like that, right? there on the right side. You see those cutouts in the belt, you see the cutouts in the bag carrier. Like it's, it's, we're able to tear it up and, and due to the, the bundling of it, we're able to drop down our pricing um, pretty well to, to kind of meet meet the needs of the customer there and, and offer them at a really competitive price point. I mean, I'm just looking here. I mean, here's, I mean, this is just one of the bundles. You have the Outlaw, the Covert, and the Blackout. I mean, these are just, it's kind of cool that, you know, you can just get what you need and not, you know, because usually when you go into a, a website, it's like, okay, here's the holster. Now let me go find a belt. Let me go find a mag. No, it's screw it. You just go right here to the bundles. Sure. Get your bundle and, and you're done. Yeah. And yeah. And it's, these products going to work very well together. I mean, these, these holsters are made for these belts. I mean, they're, they're standard one and a half inch belts, but I mean, like, it's, you know, it's going to be a solid quality product across the board that's going to work very well together. That, yeah, see, that's just that's just awesome. That go, kind of goes into that whole forethought. Um, you know, here's all your products. Um, let's just get uh, let's just get going, and um, you don't have to worry about it, right? Absolutely. Now we've been going for well a little over an hour, and I know you are a very busy man. Just trying to get today's scheduled was was a tough one. I do appreciate you taking some time to to jump on with me. Um, so. Where can people find the VersaCarry products? Yeah, so so um, a big push for us is, is our dealer base. We have we have dealers all over the U.S. that carry our stuff. You know, obviously you can you can go online to VersaCarry.com and you can look at all of our products online. Uh, but if it's something you want to look at, you want to feel, you know, go go ask your local dealers. It is it is very important for us that they you can see the product. You know, for me, it's you know I. I I order a ton of my stuff online, and, and it's it's very helpful. We have that ability. We offer you know great streams if it doesn't work. We have great confidence of sizing guys and things like that. But if, you know if it's it, it's something that we know our product is going to stand up for. So my thing is test this out. Like test the waters. If you want to completely test the waters with us, and you want to see how our holsters or our belts are going to feel, find the the most inexpensive item on our website and, and snag it. And you know what what. It, that's going to be the same leather that we're pumping out holsters out of our belt It's a very durable, solid quality leather. And so um, a lot of people will do that. We'll notice a lot of people go on our website and they buy, you know, from the commander, one of our more entry level holsters, and they, they fall in love with it. So, um, and then they're back, or they're in their dealer asking for our belts or asking for, um, you know, any, any sort of our, uh, our holster line. So check your local dealers. Um, and certainly check us out on our website, and then we obviously have all of our um, our sources, you know, on Instagram, and Facebook, Twitter. I think there's a TikTok now. Yeah. Now, there's there's one product I, re I realized I forgot to give a little bit of love to. Sure, I'm gonna bring it up right here. And honestly, got to be one of the coolest concepts on your site. Oh yeah, the mold the moldy tool outside the waistband holster. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> one of the one of the coolest ideas, right? I mean, it's just like there it is. Here's my moldy tool, my flashlight, and my pen right in the holster. Because uh, yeah. it's, working it's, it's, so, it's, it's a very simple thought, but man, it's so helpful. I mean, I can't tell you like how many times I just shove everything I have into my pockets and it gets yeah. <laughs> bulked up, and it's so frustrating. And not only that, but we carry around. I don't. I don't think. I don't think I have any here, but we carry around um, snips. They're just small little scissors. Um, and almost every single pair of jeans I have, I had to get new jeans. Um, they poke through the back of the yeah, pocket. The, the pockets and my jeans carrying these snips around, and I'm like, this is the most ridiculous problem to ever have. And and you know, one of our R&D guys goes, get a multi tool holster, go get like a magazine holster. And so I'm walking around with like a mag mag holster, a, a multi-tool <laughs> holster with little tiny scissors in it because it's such a cool little concept. And I, I love that little thing. It's it's neat. It's 
and I, I feel bad because I meant to I meant to bring this up earlier. We got to talk about something else, and then uh, as we're wrapping up here, I'm like, wait, hold on a second, I gotta get back to it because you know, for me, I've been in the tech industry um, yeah. back when I was a field tech. You know, I have bags and stuff, and I'm ro I'm running through um, a server room, and there's just certain tools you need to have. Yeah. Um, even now in my everyday carry, let's see, flashlight in the back, this back pocket, knife in this back pocket. Um, I've got a, uh, a Ridge wallet, which is my front pocket. My, my pistol's here. Um, and then I think of, I'm not rolling through those data centers anymore. I can't imagine of all the crap that I would carry now that sure. I saw that holster. I'm like, cause I carry, you know, I carry multi tools and stuff. I used that whole you know, that on my belt, and um, I saw that on the website. I'm like, this is just the coolest thing. And and um, I could have, if I was still doing that type of work, I totally would have had one of those things. Because well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you where that stuff comes from, and it's it's because we have such a strong R and D department. We have uh, it comes from our guys who are like, man, I'm sick and tired of all this stuff in my pocket. And so they just they just get bored and they'll come in and they'll whip something up real fast and they, you know, then one of us sees and says, "What is that?" And he said, "Well, I just made it so that I could carry one." That's sweet. Let's run it. That's awesome. Yeah. And so then we'll go through an official design process. We'll, we'll pop it into production, and then it does very well for us. And we're like, "Man, this is great." I mean, like our little ammo caddies. It's really yeah. You know, people love it. And like, that's great. You don't, have to, you don't have to, you know, just carry around extra rounds wherever wherever you can find space and. Um, but it's yeah, it's funny. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that up now. That's in rifle gear. Um, share view screen. The ammo cad caddies is just the coolest thing in the world. Um, sure. God, so hard to. I don't know why, man. I am just I am just striking out on finding things today. But yeah, the ammo carrier because. Um, that is just the coolest thing in the world mm -hmm. because it, it just, um, I mean, we all have, we've all, all, all bought ammo. Like, you know, for me back when I was a kid, I used to, uh, you know, I, I started learning rifle on a 30, 30 Winchester yeah. and you get the little plastic carrier with the bullets and stuff like that. But, um, that would have been the coolest thing in the world as a kid to have. And it's totally practical. Um, sure. You know, throw that on your sling and go. And gosh, that's great. And you can you can either throw. It. So one of the things that we we did, um, uh, you know, when I was when I still was Styrus, actually, this is the first first security product I bought. Was uh, I was training uh, with the gun site individuals on the um, on the Styrus Scout. We were doing Scout rifle courses, and um, great instructor. Um, Gun side instructor named Illing knew if he get a chance to to ever take a class with uh, Miss Illing. She was an absolutely incredible one of the instructors I've ever had, and she was the one who, who kind of told me that this is something I needed. And you watch, you know, you're going to say South Africa to go on a hunt. You have, you know, two separate magazines in, in the rifle because that's how it was designed. And ammo caddy on the side. I mean, you're ready for for whatever may happen. Like right there, you see them all the right. Yeah. Uh, it's it's wildly cool, and you want to take that off. You have the the carrier on your belt too, so it's just the Velcro strap already on your belt. So you just whatever works. It's very versatile. That's um, that's just one of the biggest things for us. Is it's versatility. It's a part of our name. So yeah, see that that's just cool because I honestly I never thought about that being in leather until honestly two hours before we we started doing this podcast. Um, you know, I was going, I was going back through the website, going through the products and I'm like, Hey, you know what? I didn't even realize this is here. You know, I, I, I cause I'm so focused on, you know, the holsters Yeah. and I'm like, well, they, there's other products and you know, I knew they had other products, but that's just the coolest thing in the world. Cause I remember it's the, you know, the old, uh, God, we used to shoot federal, um, the old red federal plastic cartridge carrier <laughs> for my. Yeah. For my uh, thirty thirty uh, bullets, um, and yeah, it's just that that's cool because that just again that just takes takes it to the next level. Yeah, it's cool. It's the little so, things that matter, and uh, and for us, I mean this this came out of a need. Um, 
you know, we had some of our gun site instructors talk to us about, man, this would be really cool if you guys could do something like that. And since we have such a strong R&D presence, we said, yeah, it's easy. Let's just knock it out. Let's do it. Let's make it work. And, and you, if you're on the website, you can see the size of it. We have a, an ample selection of, of calibers and options that you can choose from. So it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's not, we didn't just make 308 and, you know, 300 weight mag. Like we went, we went <laughs> down. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. So. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I I didn't bring it up. God, you even have twelve gauge, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, who does that in twelve gauge in yeah, leather? I mean, it's I'm trying to see how weird we can get with it. You know, everybody's got some like, <laughs> strange round that they always, you know, they always. Get. Um, like, oh goodness, we'll figure it out. But yeah, three thirty Dakota. How many rifles have you seen in three thirty Dakota? Uh, not one actually, but <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> But hey, I have an option for you. That's what you want to get into. So, <laughs> so well, anyways, like I said, you know, uh, we're rolling about a, almost an hour and a half, and I want to be respectful of your time. Yeah, thank you. Thanks again for, for jumping on with me. Um, I really appreciate you taking time and, and talking because, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff today other, other than, hey, look, you know, we sell holsters. It's not that you're selling holsters. It's you're selling quality. Absolutely. Um, you're selling, you're selling, you're not selling a product, you're, you're selling a mission. Of course. And that's what I, that's what I really liked about uh, visiting with everybody down at SHOT Show. Well, thank you. It means a lot. And that's, that's something that, um, that's never going to change. That, that is who we are. Um, and that's who we're going to be. It's, it's wildly important to us. Uh, a lot of us here are guys who carry on a daily basis. Uh, a lot of us here are prior service guys. And, and for us, it's, you know, what is going to be the appropriate gear to use if I need to use it. So uh, for us, man, we all carry, we all carry our own products. I mean, that the thing is, is that, you know, I, I couldn't always say that in my prior careers, you know, I, I have to carry what I, what I feel comfortable with, what I know, what I trust. And, and uh, I use, I use our own products. I mean, I'm like carrying it right now. I carry it when I go to the grocery store, I'm always in a versa carry holster. I'm always in a versa carry belt. I, I, the first time I put our belts on, I threw every other belt I owned in the trash, um, and it got to the point where we don't even we don't even sell like dressy dress belts, if you know what I mean. And I, I yeah. made our D guys go make me one just because I was like, man, I, they're just so different. I just love the feel and the texture of them. So um, you know, it's a, it's a big practice, but you preach company, and uh, it's important for us. So um, we, we take care of the process, we take care of the quality, and, and you know, we hope that everybody out there would give us a shot and. and um, you know, run, run some risk care products. We're proud of what they are. Um, we're growing and we're moving. And, uh, we just hope some people want to hop on for the ride. So. Great. And for everybody watching this or even on the audio side, I know we've been showing a lot of stuff on the screen, the audio side, but um, you can go watch the video later. I'll have a link in the description down below. That way you can go right to Versa Carry to check them out. If you go to their dealers, I mean, when I first learned Versa Carry, when I bought this thing, I bought it at a dealer. Um, I didn't buy it off VersaCarry.com. I was actually at a dealer. This this was there. I had to play with it, and um, it was enough for me to buy it. So definitely go check your, your local dealers to see what they have. Because um, honestly, when when I was at SHOT, I got to play with all this stuff. Um, I, I actually spent more time at the VersaCarry booth than I had planned to. And that's not a bad thing. So definitely go check your, your local dealers to, to see their, their products. Sure. Again, Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely, sir. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. I had a really good time talking to Scott. I had never talked to Scott before. This interview was originally supposed to be with someone else from VersaCarry, but through some problems, that person became unavailable. But Scott stepped up and said, we're going to do this. And I am so glad that he did. Now, this is going to sound really shallow. I've talked to the other person before that was supposed to be on the podcast. Very nice person. Spent a lot of time at the booth at shot with them. But I am really glad that Scott was interviewed instead. He's just really an amazing guy. Um, I didn't expect the interview to go the way it did. I honestly didn't. I knew that it was going to be a good interview because when I talked to the people at SHOT, 
they believed in their product. I liked the product and I'm going to be playing with some, some VersaCarry. I mean, I, I have an old VersaCarry holster that I just didn't like, um, like I said in the intro, but these are different. It's totally different. They still sell that holster that I have. Um, it just didn't work for me. And as you guys know, I don't like inside the waistband holsters. I, I don't hate them. They're just, they don't fit me. But playing with these holsters, there was just something different. And talking to Scott, now he's head, you know, basically the operations of, of you know, the manufacturing and all that stuff. And I caught something and I called it out at the end of the interview. You know, he was talking about learning about the leather, about how this is art, not manufacturing. And he's feeling that belt. And he's talking about feeling it. And he got that smile. He's not even looking at the camera. He's just looking at that belt. And he's got a smile. You can just tell he loves his job. This is not really even a job. This is his life, his livelihood. And he wants to do the best job possible for his customers. And I really want to thank Scott because that interview went way better than I had ever expected an interview to go. If you like the work that I do here, please consider supporting me for free by shopping my affiliate links and banners at www.trb.fyi. Every time you click on one of those banners or those links, before you go shopping, it'll take you to their website and a small portion of your purchase will come back to the channel so that I can continue to bring you additional content. If you'd like to make a direct donation, you can do it right there on the web page. It'll be on the right hand side, a little farther down to the bottom. You click the link and make a direct donation. You can also become a patron. For as little as $1 a month, you can support the channel. And that definitely helps me bring additional content. Thanks for listening. Hope you're staying safe out there. And I look forward to talking to you again soon.